Okay, today we're gonna to be making salt dough sculptures. Um, and if you've never done a salt dough sculpture before, it's really fun to play around with. Um, but before we get started, let's make sure if you don't already have a pre-mixed salt dough ball, um, it's really easy to mix the ingredients together. What you're going to need to make the salt dough is some sort of mixing bowl and a spoon. You're also going to need one cup of flour, half a cup of cold water, and also a half a cup of table salt. So if you don't already have your dough pre-mixed, I'm just gonna show you how to do it really quick. You wanna get a measuring cup of one cup and you're going to uh, get that one cup from your flour and pour it in your bowl. You're going to also get half cup of your salt. So find your half cup measuring cup, pour in your salt until it's about up to the top. There we go. And last but not least, a half cup of cold water. And you can throw that in the mix. And then with some sort of spoon, you're just going to mix, mix, mix those ingredients together. Now, what's awesome about salt dough is that it's super kid friendly in the way there's nothing toxic in it. It's the same ingredients that you would use to say bake bread. So there's nothing, no chemicals or anything in it to make it harmful to you. Now that being said, don't pop it in your mouth because <laughs> um, we're gonna need it for our project today. But once you kind of have it mixed together where it's a little bit kind of crumbly, you can flat out just use your hands to squeeze the ingredients together. Just keep squeezing it, squeezing it, squeezing it. And as you're squeezing, you're gonna notice that the dough is starting to kind of congeal and stick together, almost like Play-Doh. So again, kind of squeeze it, squeeze it, squeeze it together and pat it, pat it, pat it until you have the formation of your salt dough ball. Now, speaking of formation, the reason why we are making salt dough sculptures is because we are concentrating on form, which is the fifth element of art. And for those of you who don't know, form means when something is three-dimensional, meaning it's not a flat picture, but it's an object that has different sides. Um, so either it's something that is 3D or if it is two-dimensional, it looks like it's 3D. But today we're gonna make actual three-dimensional form sculptures using our salt dough. So once you have your um, salt dough, um, what we're gonna do is, we're just gonna go over some techniques that you can do to manipulate your dough to do different things. So first, let's do the roll method. Now the roll method is great if you ever want a skinny, long um, form. So if you're making a snake or anything that's like a skinny, long line or tube, we're gonna use the roll method. And what you're gonna do is you can, um, we're, let's start it off actually just doing a rainbow. Um, you can take a little part of your dough and if it's been in the refrigerator, just kind of squeeze it in your hand so that it warms up a bit. And then once you have it, you can put it in the palm of your hand and we're gonna do the roll method, meaning we're gonna get our other palm on top and just kind of roll, 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 roll it in a circular motion and that makes our dough into a nice sphere. Then let's place it down and what you're gonna do is you're gonna, when you place down your, your dough ball, you're gonna take your palm of your hand and you are just gonna push and rock it back forth up, down, 
up, down, up, down. Now, you might notice while you're pressing down and moving it back forth that your dough ball has extended into a thick tube. So the more you rock it back and forth, I can even add my other hand on top of it if it's getting pretty long. Um, it's many times as you rock it back and forth, the thinner and narrower your tube is going to get like that. All right, so if we have a really long tube, what we can do is you can either break it apart or if you have a, a knife, we can even cut it in half. Um, put our one tube off to the side because we'll use it. But let's just take that other half of our tube and let's just roll, 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 roll it. There we go, until it is, oops. If it comes apart, you can just squeeze it back together and then it should be fine. So let's just roll, roll, roll it until it is somewhat thinner. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Um, I'm gonna make a larger rainbow. So I'm gonna take that uh, tube and I'm just going to curve, curve, curve it to be the top of my rainbow, okay? I'm gonna get that other tube and I'm going to roll, 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 roll that tube until it's also the same sort of thickness. So I'm going to roll it out. Again, if it kind of comes apart, you just squeeze your dough. It should be, uh, it should go back together if you give it a little squeeze. But you want to roll, roll, roll it. Now I might cut this one. I might cut a little bit off this one and save that one for later because this one can be a slightly shorter ring of my rainbow. So again, roll, roll, roll it until it becomes kind of the same sort of thickness or length. And then right underneath that ring, you can put your second ring. And the great thing about salt dough, which is different from clay, is that if you just give it a nice squeeze, those two pieces of the dough should stick together and not fall apart. So you can kind of squeeze, squeeze, squeeze around. Let's get our next uh, tube and let's just roll it, roll, roll, roll it a little bit more so that it can also be added as the next part of our rainbow. And just again, give it a little squeeze, 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 pinch, 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 so that all three rings kind of are sticking a little bit together. Okay, so we have a ring for red, orange, yellow. We need at least two more for green and blue. So I'm gonna just take another kind of chunk of my salt dough and do the same sort of method. I can kind of make a sphere by doing the roll method, putting it down, rocking it back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, so that it becomes almost like a tube. I can use both hands once it gets nice and long. It's getting really thin and long. The more I rock it back and forth, back, forth, back, forth. Oops. Awesome. So I might cut it in half. Save that one. Roll this one back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. Till it's about as thick as my other ones. And I bet I can get my two, my blue and my, or, or my green and my blue out of this one. So I might cut it slightly, not in half, but like that. So I have one ring for my green and one ring for my blue. And you can just kind of squeeze, squeeze, squeeze them together. Nice. Now if your dough is all different lengths, but you want a nice crisp straight edge, that's when you can, you can take a knife and just kind of cut a straight edge along your dough, cutting it off so that your rainbow's bottom has the same length. Cool. All right, so let's put that off to the side. Now, if you need more time with it, you can take your time, but I'm just gonna go ahead and show you um, how we can make our next one, which is our snake. So for a snake, again, we're gonna kind of use that rolling tube method. Um, so you can get a nice big chunk 
of your salt dough and you can squeeze, squeeze, squeeze it. And then remember, roll, roll, roll it in between your two palms or you can put the dough down on the table and just do that circular motion around and around and around and around. And that makes your dough take on the form of a sphere. And a sphere is a three-dimensional shape where it is round all the way around like a ball. Now that we have our sphere, we're going to use our, um, our roll method to make a long tube. So you can go ahead and you can use your hand flat on top to rock it back, forth, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And notice how it's becoming kind of that larger tube. As soon as it's long enough where you can add a second hand, you can roll it back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. But since I want my snake to be thinner on one end and thicker on the other for his head, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to shift my two hands over to this end, ignoring this end, not having my hand on this end. So when I rock back, forth, back, forth, because I'm ignoring this part, and I mostly uh, have my hands on this end, notice how this end is starting to get much thinner than the other end. So you can kind of rock it back, forth, back, forth. I think that's good, that's a long snake. Um, but notice my tail is much thinner and this other end is much thicker. So what I can do is I can take my tail and it depends on how you want your snake to be formed. I'm gonna have mine in kind of like a slithering, uh, sort of wavy line. So it depends, you can make your snake be in any formation, but I'm gonna make it be in this nice wavy line and then at the end, to get that head, I'm just gonna kind of push up the end of my head. I'm gonna pinch it where I want the neck to be and then with my other hand, just kind of pinch, pinch, pinch and so that it gets much thicker at the end. We see that? So you can move it and just kind of push it in a little bit to make it bigger. Then what I can do is with my thumbs, I can just take my thumbs and anywhere where I want the eyes to be, I can take the tips of my thumbs and just press in. And that's gonna make two little indentations. See that? And then I can kind of pinch his snout with, with my pincher. So I have an area that's indented for the eyes and then pinch for the snout. Now for the eyes, you can just take the tiniest little pinch of some of your salt dough, like really tiny. And just with your fingers, you can do the roll method, where if you rotate your fingers around and round, kind of pinching them, or round and round on the table, that creates the tiniest little sphere. So that can be one of my snake eyes, and I can press it in. And then I take my other teeny tiny piece of the salt dough, do the roll method either with your pinchers or again with your finger rolling it round and round and round on the table, and that can be my second snake eye. If you have a pencil, you can create texture and details on your snake. Now, texture is another element of art. It's the sixth element of art. And texture is the way that something actually feels, which is actual or real texture, or the way that something looks like how it feels, which is implied texture. We're gonna add real texture to our salt dough because it's three-dimensional. It can actually make it feel scaly and rough by taking my pencil and using the tip of my pencil to just poke, 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 little uh, indentations around on my snake, making the surface of my snake actually feel the real texture of kind of rough scaly, okay? If I didn't add it, it would feel smooth, but because I'm adding the real actual texture, it is gonna kind of feel a little bit rough and scaly, just like how a snake would. So go ahead, take your the tip of your pencil, and you can poke little hole indentations. Don't poke it all the way through. 
just lightly tap it so that it, on the surface of your um, snake, it's just gonna have that texture, okay? Um, if you accidentally went all the way through, remember you can just kind of squeeze your dough to back together and it'll stick together. Now at the end, I might want it to make it a rattlesnake, so towards the end, I could take my pencil and either draw a line or you can kind of use the tip of your knife if you have a knife to make little line indentations to make it look like a rattlesnake. Why not? Last but not least, I can take the tip of my pencil and do a little line for my one snake eye pupil and then one for the other one and then two little dots for his snout. Ooh, if you want a, your snake to have a uh, tongue, you can, again, take the teeniest, tiniest little bit of that salt dough, and then we're gonna do the tiny roll method to make it a tiny tube by um, putting it down on your table and then rolling it back forth, back forth, back forth. It gets the tiniest little tube like a, like a snake tongue. And you can even press and add it to your uh, snout. Okay, so now that we have our snake tongue attached to our snake snout, um, he's complete. And so we can very carefully put him on the side. Okay, the last sort of salt dough sculpture I'm gonna show you how to do is animal faces. Now you can do any animal that you would like. I did a bunny and a bear, but again, you can do whichever one you want. It's kind of the same sort of steps. So what we're gonna do is you can take a little bit of your salt dough, probably something that is a little, gonna fill the palm of your hands, and we're gonna make it that sphere again by doing our roll method, either one palm on top of the other or laying down your dough and having the palm of your hand rotate it round, 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 slightly pressing down a little bit so that your ball dough, when you roll it around and around, becomes that nice, totally round sphere. Once you have that sphere, you're actually gonna take the palm of your hand and you're gonna press down <laughs> to flatten it, to make it more of a flat, circular sort of cookie shape. Um, now that we have kind of like our cookie shape, uh, what we can do is lay it down. Okay, that's gonna be the head of our animal. And we're gonna create the snout of our animal. And a snout is just either one sphere or two spheres connected to each other. So I'm, since I'm gonna do the rabbit, I'm gonna just pull a little bit of my salt dough. I'm gonna roll it around, do the roll method to make a tiny sphere. And that's gonna be one side of my rabbit snout. I'm gonna use the same amount that I just did to make the other ones. I'm gonna look and eyeball it. That looks about the same. And then again, use the roll method, roll it round, 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 and to do the other side of the snout, okay? Now he needs a tiny little nose. So a smaller bit of your salto, we can roll that with the roll method to make a tiny little piece. That looks too big, so I'm gonna divide it in half to make it slightly smaller. Roll, 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 and then put it on top and press down so that these three spheres of your dough really stick to your face. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna do my ears. So again, you can take a little bit of your salt dough. We're gonna make that tube um, using that roll method where we just roll it back forth, back forth. Here, I'm gonna roll it in a sphere first. Put, put it flat on the table, roll it back forth, back forth, back forth. It's getting longer and longer and longer. I'm gonna stop it right there. That looks pretty long enough. I'm gonna take my uh, knife. I'm gonna cut it in half. There we go. And I'm going to put one tube on the top of one of my, of, of my bunny head and then on the other. And then I'm just gonna press, press, pinch, pinch so that these tubes stick. But you might notice uh, bunny 
ears are not tubes, they're flatter. So what I can do is I can just take my finger and press down to flatten it. Same with the other one. Take your finger, press down to flatten it. Okay, now we're missing our bunny eyes, but our bunny eyes are super teeny tiny, so that means you can just take the tiniest piece of your salt dough, do the roll method, make it a tiny little sphere wherever you want your eyes. You can press down, do it to the other one, press down so that it really sticks like that. Nice. Now that we have the formation of our bunny head, you can take your pencil and you can draw any sort of details that you'd like. So I'm drawing two kind of curved lines, making an almond shape on the inside of one ear and on the inside of the other. I can even put little whisker dots to create a little texture on its snout. If you want to, you can even draw little uh, pupils up to you. Also, if you wanted to create that fur texture, you can take your the tip of your pencil and very lightly just draw a little dash line, dash line, dash lines around the area that you want to be furry or have that kind of fur looking texture. Okay, awesome. All right, friends, so once you are done with your salt dough sculptures, what you can do is you can have an adult put them on a baking sheet, preheat the oven for 250 degrees, and then you place your um, baking sheet with your salt dough uh, sculptures on top of the baking sheet, put it in the oven for two hours at 250. And what happens, just kind of like a ceramics kiln, is that the salt dough is going to dry and harden just like you were baking a cookie, but it's pretty, pretty sturdy and hard. And once it's hard, the great thing about salt dough is that you can either paint it or even if you just have regular markers, you can use your markers to color on top of your salt dough and the color should stay on. Awesome. All right, friends, so I hope that you have fun creating your salt dough sculptures. Remember, you can create whatever you'd like. I just wanted to show you some of the techniques uh, that you can use to, to create some of these sculptures, but I can't wait to see whatever sort of sculptures you come up with. Good luck.